Welcome, beautiful goddess, to this video on how to brand up your business by qualifying your leads. I'm going to take you through how to qualify your leads so that you can increase your conversions, not waste time on people who are not your ideal client, and really put in place a system so that you can make sure you are pre qualifying your clients in all your content. Now, it's really important first that you have created your soulmate vision board. And if you haven't done that or you haven't unpacked what the soul client looks like, then definitely watch my previous video. The link will be below on how to identify your soul client and how to create your soul client vision board. Once you have that, you are armed with a very clear idea of what they look like what they embody, what their values are, and also what you want to call in. Then we can get busy here on learning how to distinguish your ideal client from the sea of many potential clients. Now, I just want to share with you a personal story too that I have when I first started my business, I probably started from a space of scarcity and I was just happy to take on any client that was willing to pay me. What happened was I started attracting clients, one, who didn't really value my skill set and what I love to do. Two, they started wanting to discount my fees, pay me late. They wanted me to do more work. They were just became difficult clients. And it was only then that I realized that, oh my gosh, I have attracted a client who didn't really resonate with me, who didn't like the way I worked and really wasn't suiting me. So it's far better for you to get super clear on qualifying your clients so that you can say no to those that you do not want to work with and really bring in those beautiful clients who are your like fan clients who you love talking to, you love listening to their voice messages. I love this. My clients light me up. They are the biggest, you know, promoters of what I do. They are coachable. They jump on everything that I lead them in and they are like implementing fast in their business. And what's happening is their results are great. So taking on a bad client is going to affect your results. It's going to affect your reputation. So make sure you listen in on the six pillars I'm going to share with you on how to pre-qualify your clients. Firstly, I want to say that qualifying should take place before selling. So this is a reminder that every step of content you create needs to be really specific to call in that client and repel the other clients. You want to be putting into your words, your branding, how you come across and being very clear of who you want to work with and who absolutely you will not be working with because there are thousands of clients out there with an abundance mindset. There are so many ideal clients out there. You absolutely don't need to take on everyone and you really shouldn't for your sanity and for your financial situation. So the six pillars. So let's get crystal clear on what they look like and how important it is to save you the significant frustration, time and energy as you build your business. The first pillar is want and need. You want to find a client who wants what you have, right? And they have a need to overcome the problem. They are willing to invest in you to get the solution. And so this is where you have to be super clear on the solution that you are providing a solution to and what problems you solve. Because if you don't meet their needs, then there's going to be a critical problem at some point. Also, your business needs to operate from your genius zone so that you're not doing work that you don't love. Like I love coaching. I love inspiring women. I love creating processes, um, working on branding and seeing them step up as leaders. If I get a client who is not interested in being a leader, who just wants to sit behind a computer and, and just be that, that type of person who's just happy, just, you know, working per hour, then they absolutely are not my client. 
and I don't enjoy working with them because I can see potential and they are not at the point where they're ready to implement. So just make sure that you don't take a customer onto your business that is solidly outside of your area of expertise and also that is not in the human design or um, level where they want to apply what you have because it will always come back to bite you. Step two is can they afford it? This is so important and this is what I say. Um, it's really important to put your mask on first and to elevate your customer profile. You want to come from a space of abundance and there are absolutely clients out there who can afford to pay you what you're charging and you are setting your price based on your transformation. Thirdly, do they have decision power? Are they the person that says yes? I can tell you that I'm the person in my life that says yes to opportunities. I don't need to speak to anyone else. If, however, they need to speak to their partner or husband, you need that person in the call to make the decision. And it's really important to get that done first so you're not on a sales call with a client and then realize that they have to go and speak to someone else. That will be a lost sale. It's so important that you understand if they have decision-making power and you can ask this in the first few messages with them. The next is buy based on value. So are they the person buying the right out outcome or result? So you really need to get clear on what exactly they value and are they willing to pay for what you have, you know, packaged up or produced. For example, I can produce an online course, a green course, and I can produce a hybrid, which is an online course supported by mentorship. And that's my business. That's what I love to do. This person might only want a self-paced course and they see that your hybrid model is overpriced because they don't actually want the rest of the package. So at this point, you either refer them to a hybrid, I mean, to a, um, a low ticket item because that's all they are, are, are wanting and they are price sensitive. Um, or you get super clear with them on the value that you provide with the mentoring and how this is going to save them time, tears, money in the long run by paying a higher value now because it's going to shortcut their journey. This is why knowing your value, knowing why you've priced your package and knowing your transformation is so, so important. Okay, number five is it has to be urgent now, right? You want people who are ready to buy now, who are ready to take the time to invest in your program. And so make sure that you are not pressuring anyone into signing up for a discount or signing up for urgency when it's not their time. This is where you have to come from this abundance mindset of the right clients will come to me at the right time for them and it will all align. There's no need to um, hard sell or, or pressure anyone into taking the, the decision because ultimately it's going to come back and bite you again because you'll have a trouble with them in the first few weeks and the timing won't be right and it'll become an issue. So make sure urgency is now. The sixth pillar, which I absolutely do put in my, you know, entry questionnaires is asking them about their historical buying decisions. I want to know if my new client has worked with a mentor before, who they've worked with and what they've experienced, because it gives me a good indication of one, whether they take responsibility for themselves, two, if they are, are willing to invest in themselves before, or whether they um, are, are of a client type where they just want free information and listen to 80,000 webinars and all the free podcasts and really don't value what you have. You want to get to a client who is ready for what you have at that time. Otherwise, there's a big difference in that personality. 
So I hope that this has really inspired you to think about the six pillars, how you can pre-qualify your clients. And just know that I absolutely run my business differently now than I did when I started. And the reason for this is because I have developed the mindset of wealth and I know the importance of really having a change in mindset when you run your business and that who you attract is exactly the, the mirror of how you've developed yourself. And this is why in my coaching programs, I focus on mindset ascension. Yes, there is obviously all the business strategy and the tactics that, you know, have to be there. But the developing your wealth mindset is so, so key because you really, to be successful in business, need to have that paradigm shift. And this is an area where I filter that into and really embody that in my business. And it's all part of my model, the hybrid model of bringing accountability and mindset ascension to help women to elevate to wealth. So if you've loved this video, please make sure you subscribe and comment. I'd love to share all the six pillars, which one that you will be, you know, implementing today or putting into your branding or speaking about. And I would love to also see you in the next video. I have shared videos on how to launch your online course, how to unpack your client avatar and how to create your vision boards. So make sure that you do check out the next video and I look forward to seeing you in the next training.